Hello viewers, welcome to Kids Auto and Truck Repair. Today we have a 2016 Honda Pilot with a 3.5 liter. The complaint on this vehicle is the check engine light remains on on the dash while the engine is running. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in the vehicle and confirm the complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, we're going to connect the scan tool to the vehicle to see what kind of trouble codes we have in the engine computer that's causing the check engine light to remain on while the engine is running. So now let's go in the vehicle and confirm the complaint. So let's see what we got. So as you can hear, the engine is running and the check engine light remains on on the dash. We have a message that says emission system problem, check engine light is on, and the engine RPM is actually higher than normal at idle. And there's another message that says blind spot info system problem. So we have a problem with the blind spot system. So check engine light remains on, engine idle is higher than normal. Actually, right now the idle is going up by itself. I'm not stepping on the accelerator pedal right now. Here's my foot. I'm not stepping, but the idle is higher than normal. So something is wrong. Actually, the P over here, the park position, the P letter is flashing on the dash. So that's weird. So now I'm going to turn off the engine. I'm going to turn the key on. I'm gonna connect the scan tool to the vehicle and then I will bring you guys back up. I got the scan tool connected to the vehicle. So now let's scan the engine computer and see what happens. The scan tool has identified the vehicle. Everything looks good. Let's click OK. Let's scan all the control units on the vehicle. We have one code in the engine computer. Our trouble code is P26. 52 and it says rocker arm oil pressure switch B circuit high voltage and this code is a permanent code and also temporary in the engine computer now this code is what's causing the check engine light to remain on while the engine is running now this code is pretty straightforward this rocker arm oil pressure switch is actually a switch that's located on top of the valve cover and the job of this switch is to tell the computer the oil pressure around the rocket arms okay on top of the engine so the valve train area so when the engine starts the oil pump pumps the oil throughout the engine at a certain pressure when that oil goes on top of the engine around the valves the oil, uh, the rocket arm oil pressure switch picks up this pressure and sends the signal to the engine computer to let the engine computer know that the rocket arms are being lubricated like they're supposed to. Now, this switch is a one wire switch. The switch is grounded through the valve cover. The computer sends, I believe, system voltage down the wire on the switch. And then when the engine is started, the switch will pull the voltage to ground when the oil pressure around the rocket arms increases, which actually causes the voltage in the switch wiring to drop. And when the computer sees the voltage drop, that's how it knows that there is enough oil pressure around the rocket arms. Okay. Now I've seen this switch get stuck sometimes they stick close or they stick open um, it depends now let's scroll down and see what other trouble codes we have and after that we're going to go straight to this switch and do some tests at the switch and this code can be caused by a defective rocket arm oil pressure switch itself or a problem in the wiring between the switch and the engine computer because if you have an open in the wiring of the switch the computer will see that constant high voltage on the switch wire and it's going to cause this trouble code to be set okay the computer has to be able to see a voltage change in this 
switch wire to actually not set this code. So an open in the wiring can cause this code to be set as well. So now let's scroll down and see what else we have. We have one code in the transmission control unit. The code we have in the TCM is U0401 and it says invalid data received from PCM. That's interesting. So let's keep scrolling down. No codes on these control units, so that's good. So this is what's causing the blind spot light to be on on the dash. Left side BSR radar unit received PCM. ATS system failure information. Right side BSI radar unit received PCM A slash T. I think this is automatic transmission system failure information. Very interesting. Let's see what we have on the generic side of the tool. So on the generic side of the tool we have the same code P2652 and it says B rocket arm actuator system stuck on bank one. So now what I'm gonna do is let's go into the engine computer. Let's see if we have some data pids about the rocket arm oil pressure switch. There is two of them. There's one on the front bank and there's another one on the back bank because this is a V6 engine. Let's see if we have any data pids about this rocket arm oil pressure switch. So let's go to data. Let's go to powertrain data. Okay, so right here. Rocket arm oil control solenoid. Rocket arm oil pressure sensor. Rocket arm oil control solenoid. So there's a solenoid and a pressure uh, switch next to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this list. I just want to look at the rocket arm pressure switch uh, data pid. That's all I'm interested in right now. So we got these two. I'm going to grab all these data pids. So let's look at them and see if there will be something that's going to stand out to us. So let's list these data pids and see what happens. Okay, so rocket arm oil control solenoid bank one is off. Rocket arm oil control solenoid bank two is also off. Rocket arm oil pressure sensor. So oil pressure sensor over here is showing us 0.2. I think this is inches of water. Rocket arm oil pressure switch, I mean, I'm sorry, rocket arm oil pressure sensor is showing us 0.74 volts. Okay, so I'm going to start the engine. Let's see what happens. engine is going straight to high rpms as soon as you start it okay so now i don't want to run this engine long enough the idle is too high i'm going to turn this off so now what we're going to do is let's go under the hood and do some tests at the switch itself so i'm gonna leave the key on let's go under the hood and do some tests at the switch the cylinder head in front of the vehicle is bank two and then the cylinder head next to the firewall is bank one so our rocket arm pressure switch is back over here so the green connector that you see over there is our rocket arm pressure switch on bank one and then the one on bank two is this one over here so this is bank two 
and then this one over here is bank one. So now what we're gonna do is, the first thing is going to be testing the wiring of the sensor first. So here's our sensor. Okay, now before I disconnect it, I'm going to back probe this wire so we can see what voltage we have at this wire with the sensor connected. And then we're gonna disconnect it to see if the voltage on this wire is gonna change. So it's a one wire pressure sensor. It's grounded through the cylinder head. The computer sends the voltage down this wire, like I said earlier, and then the pressure switch pulls that voltage to ground based on the oil pressure on the tip of the sensor, okay? Or the tip of the switch. So we're gonna use our multimeter here to test the pressure switch wiring. So I'm gonna connect this black Alighieri clamp to battery ground. We're gonna be on the voltage scale on the multimeter. So let's test our multimeter first. I'm gonna touch power. Let's see, we should have battery voltage there. So that's good. Our multimeter works. So now I'm going to back probe this wire on the switch. The key is on in the vehicle right now. Okay. So I back probed the wire on the switch. Now let's see what we got. So the wire is back probed and we have 12.16 volts on the multimeter, okay? So now I'm gonna go in the vehicle and start the engine. Let's see if this voltage is gonna go down with the engine running. is running the idle is very high so our voltage is bouncing around voltage is bouncing around between 10 volts 6 volts Okay. So this voltage should not be bouncing around like this. That's a problem. So I'm gonna turn off the engine. So let's. So I'm gonna turn the key on. Let's go back under the hood and check the wiring with the sensor disconnected. The engine is off. You saw the voltage bouncing around while the engine was running. So right now, the key is still on in the vehicle. So we are reading 0 0.04 volts right now. So I'm going to disconnect this switch. Let's see if I can do this one-handed here. I wanna disconnect this switch so we can watch the voltage All right, let's get this switch disconnected. Sorry, my hand is gonna be in the way. Okay, so here is the connector for the switch. Now, I'm going to back probe this wire. We should have 12 volts there. So I back probed the switch electrical connector, okay? So with the switch connector back probed, we are reading 12.15 volts on the multimeter. So this tells me that the switch wiring is good from the switch connector all the way to the engine computer up here. The wiring integrity is good, okay? so. The switch is bad. So now I'm going to remove this switch so we can replace it. And after we replace this switch, 
we should be good to go. So this is the pressure switch and next to it is the pressure solenoid. So the problem is not the solenoid, the problem is the switch. Okay, so now let's remove the switch. About an hour later, I did call the Honda dealership to get a new switch. And here it is. Here is the part number for the rocker arm pressure switch. Okay, on bank one. So here's the switch and it has a little o-ring that comes with it okay so here's the o-ring that we have to install okay so we're going to install this switch so now let's remove this now this switch is a 24 millimeter switch to remove this switch okay so just like that Now, this switch is not very tight on. So when you remove it and install the new one, you don't want to go super tight on it. So I'm just going to tighten it. I mean, I'm going to loosen it with my finger. So here it is. Okay. So here is the old switch, I'm going to put it right here. Now let's grab the new switch. So the old switch actually came out with the O-ring. Now let's compare the new switch to the old one. Okay, they both look the same, everything looks good, so that's fine. So now I'm going to install the new O-ring on the new switch so we can install it. Okay, now I'm going to have to find a way to make sure that this O-ring sticks to the switch i'm going to put a little bit of grease over here so the o-ring doesn't fall so i'm going to do that and then i'll bring you guys back up so we can install the switch there's a little groove down there i don't know if you can see that groove over here is where the o-ring goes so i'm going to have to install the o-ring first before i install the switch i'm going to put my o-ring over here on this on this screwdriver I got my o-ring over here so I don't drop it and I'm going to line it up with the hole over here. Okay, so that's good. So now I'm going to install our new switch. Hope you can see right there. All right, so now we're going to tighten the switch. So that's good, that's tight. So now let's install the switch electrical connector. All right, so that's reconnected, we're good to go. Now I'm going to back probe this wire again. Let's do the same test right now with the new switch and see what happens. So 
So right now, engine is off. We have 0.00, .00 volts. I'm gonna go in the vehicle and turn the key on first. So key is on, we have 12.15 volts. So now let's go in the vehicle and start the engine. Okay, so right off the bat, our engine idle is a lot lower right now. So this is good. This already sounds good to me, okay? The idle is not high. So now, let's go look at the multimeter. Okay, we have a steady voltage on the multimeter. We actually have steady 13.68 volts. Okay, so now I'm gonna rev it up I'm gonna rev up the engine. I will leave you over here under the hood. Watch the multimeter. I'm gonna rev up the engine and let's see what voltage we're gonna have on the multimeter when we rev up the engine. Okay guys, I went in the vehicle, revved up the engine. The engine RPM is not increasing. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to erase the trouble codes. Let's turn the engine off. Let's erase all the codes and see what happens. So I'm gonna turn off the engine. We have replaced the rocker arm switch. The engine sounds good right now. The idle is low, so that's a good sign. Let's erase all our trouble codes and see what happens. Let's clear the, the codes out of all these modules. The scan tool is done erasing codes out of all these modules. So we're good. Let's do another code scan. Let's do a post scan. We don't have a trouble code in the engine computer. These control units don't have trouble codes in them. So we're good. So now I'm gonna start the engine. Let's get the scan tool out of the way. So as you can hear, the engine sounds great. I rev the engine, the engine revs great. The idle sounds good. This is what I was expecting, okay? Based on how this engine sounds, I can tell that it's fixed. So now I'm going to bring you with me under the hood. Let's look at the voltage we have on the multimeter right now. Okay, we're still back probing the switch. Okay. So right now we're reading system voltage at the switch. I'm gonna leave you here under the hood and then I'll go in the vehicle and rev up the engine. Let's see what voltage we're gonna have on the multimeter screen when I rev the engine. So as you guys can hear, the engine sounds a lot better. When I rev up the engine, the voltage increases a little bit and then it comes down to 13.9 or 13.8 volts. So this is good, okay? The engine sounds great. The idle is good. So I'm going to install the engine cover and then we're gonna take this vehicle for a test drive. I have reinstalled the engine covers. So everything is back on. So now let's take this for a spin.
So the vehicle drives well, everything feels good, the transmission shifts well, the check engine light is off, the engine sounds good. So this is fixed guys. Based on how the engine sounds and how the vehicle drives, I can tell that this is fixed. We actually don't have to go far away to test drive this. This is good. Nice. I like how it shifts. All right, guys, so this is fixed. I'm gonna turn around and drive back to the shop. And when I get to the shop, I'll bring you guys back up so we can wrap up this video. All right, we are back at the shop. The vehicle drives well, everything is good. I'm gonna bring up our scan tool. Let's scan the engine computer again before we wrap up this video. I'm just gonna go straight to the engine computer. Temporary codes, no codes present. Let's look at permanent codes, no codes present. So this is fixed guys, we're good to go. I'm gonna turn off the engine so we can wrap up this video. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave this right over here. This 2016 Honda Pilot is fixed. The problem on this Honda was a defective rocker arm pressure switch on the Bank 1. So I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future. If this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you next time.